let's take a look at doing multiple impressions on a single piece of metal. The first thing you need is a, an impression that is not particularly deep. It's kind of small. This one's kind of nice because there's a dome going on there. Um, I'll also try this little one here and it's it's a little bit deeper so now something if you have a die that's similar to this this is one I carved but there are a lot of dies that are pretty flat um, I would not recommend using a texture plate because with that you really don't want to use the texture plate in a rolling mill in a hydraulic press because you will ruin it. The other thing that you need for your hydraulic press is a small pusher. This one I believe is a one inch pusher. It is mounted. There has been previous um, pushers this is, an, this is an older one that did not come with a mount. And to tell you the honest truth, I really like the mount. It feels more solid. The other one would kind of wiggle. It wasn't exactly flat. Um, this one's better. Okay. And last but not least, you need a very small piece of urethane that basically will fit your impression. It may be a little bit big for this one. Um, as your urethane slowly disintegrates, it will eventually fall apart. Uh, don't throw it away. I have a whole collection of pieces of urethane here that will fit um, different little tiny things to get details out of. So, I'll set up the press so that we can try this. Oh, before I forget, this is the metal that I'm using. It is very thin. Um, I believe 0.26. I have 28 gauge. I'm, I'm not exactly sure of that. Uh, this one, this metal here is a, a 24 gauge. I've used this successfully, but I have, I shopped the bargain bin and I had a lot of this left over, so I'm making use of it right now. These will make nice earrings. This one that I showed you is made out of the same really thin stuff. And to get the shape, I will use Kevin's new FSS system which comes with a base it comes with the the cutter section comes with the second part of the die and it comes with a a pusher so he will have new shapes available and you'll only have to buy the two pieces of the new shape you won't have to rebuy this part Okay, the press is set up, the pusher is centered, front to back, side to side. This is the stamp. I'm going to use Eddie's bat, which has a really sweet history behind it, of a gentleman who, uh, I can't, I don't know his name. He carved it for his grandson's uh, kindergarten party. and. It's just, and the grandson let Mr. Potter do use the die. I just, I think that's really sweet. Okay, here we go. This press is a slightly smaller press than the standard one right now that's available. Um, it's what I could afford. Okay, so that seems to be fairly, we want to make sure that it's even and centered over the die as much as possible. And the pusher needs to be centered. Okay, there's a 
here's the first one and I'll open it up and we'll see what we got there we go I'm not interested in perfect pressings I just want to see about getting them close if you'll notice on this one here they're not they're not perfect and that's okay I filled in the blanks with um, some chase some matting using chasing tools so you get the idea the next one I'm going to try to do around here and it's basically the same just you want to get it in close because the metal is is thin it's going to move and that is where if you use a thicker metal or harder metal you won't be able to do this because you know it's you're not going to be able to get in close so don't get excited that you can do this with any piece of metal second one once again it's not perfect, but I really don't particularly care. Now I'm going to continue doing this, and as you see, I was able to get I was able to get close. So I'm going to do some more. I'm not really good with uh, both hands, and then I'll show you the next process. I decided to go back in there and uh, finish pressing these a little bit more. Notice how the metal is moved, so that as as I'm pressing one, the other side pops up. That's what that's what allows you to do this. Because if it didn't, once again, it would you wouldn't be able to do it because the uh, the second one would smush into the first one. So by moving it, the metal is the, the metal will allow you to do this. So I'm gonna do some. Here's all the multiple impressions. Part is kind of to determine where I want my oval. I'm good to go here. So we're going to go over here to the second set, second part of my workshop, which is part of my garage. And I'm going to mount this up in this pitch. What I have to do with the pitch is I have to smooth this over. You can see the, the remnants of the one I did before. And then I will mount it up. Okay, I'm going to heat up the pitch. I'm going to use my handy dandy heat gun. And I've got things mostly away from it, so let's do this. press in there really deep I want them because I'm on it there okay so this needs to cool a little bit right now it's uh, it's still warm enough to move around pitch comes from the Shemkin Silver Studios. I smoothed it with just a, a steel hammer that's cold. 
and using a silicone spatula to press it down. Now it's only going to be in here for a short time and I really would like to have the least amount of uh, pitch on the back of it. I found that if I don't really secure it super tight as I get toward the end it will literally pop up which is kind of what I want in this particular case. Okay, as you can see, hopefully, um, I've got the oval all taken care of. We've come on this, and to get this off, remember, it popped right off, and there we go. Minimal pitch inside, and to get the pitch out, I'm going to move this out of the way, and I have a little piece of cardboard. paper towel that I fold up, and my hammer, heat this up, till the pitch is shiny, holding one side, and pull the pitch off, um, this metal is really hot, so. And the pitch sticks to itself, so I gotta keep moving the paper towel. I'm not gonna touch it. But pitch is off enough. I'm going to take it, burn off the rest of the pitch, and um, get it ready so that I can dome it and cut it. Next step. The last or the doming step to give this a slight dome like this this other one that I did is done using this particular silhouette die. Um, Mr. Potter said that we can use the the die that comes with the um, FSS tool which in this case is the same size as this particular one but this is handy and some of the shapes he has we don't have silhouette dies for. So. What I'm going to do is I have a piece, I have a whole bunch of foam that I've been using for um, getting impressions. And I'm going to lay the foam on top of this little dome here. And then I'm going to try to get this the way it was. Now, now you can see why it was important to get a little bit extra because I, I lost my lines because, well... And I, since I press it on the foam, um, it means that I can press as hard as I want and I'll get a nice dome, not too deep. If I want something deeper, I'll stick a little bit of, of urethane under the foam, but I don't on this. Too. I think this is about right. So I'm going to take this whole thing and take it to the press and press it. It's pressed and I'll remove the top and now you can see where the pressing is. And you can see how it domed nicely. No breakthrough on the edges, which is cool. Okay, now, next step. Let's assemble the FSS tool. So, base first. Evenly balanced. Okay, so this doesn't, this doesn't fit. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, 
cut off a little bit of this. Slide it in. Okay. That fits. Make sure it doesn't move around. Get the other piece. Aim it so it's it's level. Didn't do it. Let's try that again. Works better with there we go. It's down. Had the presser top. Okay, took it out. Let's, let's see what we got here. Okay, again, lift it very carefully. Yep. Okay, so here it is. Tap it. Down it goes. Move that out of the way. And here's my second. My second earring.